These are the stories that keep me up at night. The missing, the murdered, the mysteries that have gone unsolved in our own backyards. I've reported on crime in North Texas for more than 25 years. And now I'm opening my reporter's notebook to you, revisiting cold cases, retracing steps, and revealing evidence we've never seen before. The case of Mimi Fitzgerald stands out to me because it touches on homelessness, mental health care, and a family's desperation to find her killer. She was educated, she was giving, and she loved to serve others. She liked doing hospice work. She was very religious, spiritual, never missed church, very much sort of a, a servant leader. Mimi was raising two children and working, but in her 30s, it was apparent that there was something wrong. She struggled with mental health. Some doctors would say bipolar, some said schizophrenia. Mimi's family says that she decided to live on the streets on her own at times she would live in her car and she wouldn't take money from her family or wouldn't let anyone help her. People that haven't gone through it don't understand when you see people homeless that there's a story and there's loved ones that are trying to help. Mimi's family says that she was paranoid and she really feared that someone was trying to hurt her. And at 6 a.m. on August the 15th, 1998, her fears came true. She was last seen outside the Presbyterian Night Shelter in Fort Worth. It was soon after, about just after 6.30 a.m. that we received the call that there was a, a female laying outside that had been uh, apparently beaten and her clothing had been removed and uh, was not responsible. Police say there were no witnesses, but shortly before she was beaten to death, she was seen sitting next to a man and they did release a composite sketch, but unfortunately it didn't help. Police don't have a lot of evidence, but they did have some DNA and they were able to run it through the FBI's DNA database called CODIS. In 2003 is when they got the profile that identified a male su suspect that was put into the CODIS system and that's where it remains today. There have been no matches uh, over a couple of decades of, of that process of trying to, to match it to another sample. Since there have been no matches, police are hoping that they can match the DNA through genetic genealogy. It basically matches a DNA profile to a relative. And we've actually done some cases about this in the past. Genetic genealogy is very expensive. And in this case, they were able to get some funding from the UNT Health Science Center to send this sample through and see if they can find a match. When we use the genealogy, we're searching databases to find individuals that share a high proportion of their DNA with you. Once they get a profile from a relative, they begin tracing it back to see if they can match it to the suspect. And then they still have to get a DNA sample from that suspect to confirm that person's the killer. We will get a, a family name, essentially, from, from the, the male side of the family. Uh, from there, we start to try to um, determine who was actually in Fort Worth at the time. Genealogy is revolutionizing law enforcement. They are very successful if they get a match with a relative and then tracing it back to a killer. Her family still has a lot of hope. Her daughter, to this day, still remembers the last phone call that she and her mom had just before she died. It was probably the longest conversation in that two years that I had with her. I always consider it a, a little bit of a blessing in the, in the whole horrible um, event. Her family really wants people to remember the homeless and people that suffer with mental health. Severely mentally ill people in Fort Worth now have their own safe haven from life on the streets. A new shelter has been dedicated this morning to the memory of a professional... Just after Mimi was killed, they named a night shelter after her. The Mimi Fitzgerald Safe Haven is part of Presbyterian Night Shelter. And I think it houses 10 women, 10 men with um, severe mental illness that shouldn't be probably on the streets. So that was really a, a neat honor. Mimi was tormented her whole life, but she really did want to help others. And so this shelter will now help people like her who are on the streets. And that is her legacy. 